why it's so slow. Uh, okay, this time it worked. It did not work last time. So, hi, everybody. Um, I don't know if anybody's around at this time of day. This is right before I have to go pick up my daughter. So we're going to find out um, if this is not a good time to be doing a live or not. But anyway, if you are watching this, mostly talking to the also, those of y'all who are not watching it live, this is a live video, which means there's going to be mistakes. There's going to be rambling. There's going to be distractions. And there's not going to be any editing. So just so you know, you need to stop watching if you can't handle that stuff. Okay. Because I don't want to, you know, upset you. Some of y'all seem to get really upset. Okay. Here we go. Um, these are questions from the um, Q&A form that I have in uh, the description of this video. Okay. At least I put it in there. Hopefully it's actually there. Um, so here we go. I have a, this is not me. This is someone asking the question. I have a utility cupboard that um, houses all sorts of bits and bobs like tools, light, light bulbs, not lighthouses, light bulbs, et cetera, et cetera. It's really big with deep shelves and it's really full. It was organized once and now it isn't. I can't see how I'm going to be able to declutter it without pulling things out because of the depth of the shelves. Plus I need to group like, okay, like items together. So I know what's there. Please help. Um, I follow your method elsewhere and love it, but this one space has me stumped. Okay. So here's the thing. It is a jumbled mess. Okay. The first thing to realize is there's clutter in there. I think you know this. Okay. So I'm not like going, Oh, you need to, whatever. I'm just saying, remember there's clutter, meaning there is more in this space than needs to be in there. You are going to be removing things. Okay. So instead of pulling it out, know that there's stuff that needs to be removed and look for trash. The, the five-step decluttering process is especially essential in these moments where you are completely overwhelmed in a situation like this, okay? So think trash, 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 okay? Move around, look around in there. And this, this um, question was asked before the video that I put out, probably, I think it was, before the video that I put out last Thursday or Friday, in which I went through a jumbled mess of a space. And I demonstrated, it's like a 30 minute video. I demonstrate, it wasn't live, so it was edited for those of y'all who can't handle the lives. Um, I demonstrated the whole decluttering process. And it is looking for trash, looking for trash. Reduce, 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 not pulling everything out. I mean, pull everything out if you want to, that's your business. But if you want to follow my method, no, don't pull everything out and do apply it to any situation. I'm just, it, it's the only way I can guarantee progress and only progress and never a bigger mess and never frustration. Okay. Well, we all get frustrated, but you know what I mean? Like go through there and just look for trash and pull out trash, go through there and look for easy stuff. What has randomly ended up in this space. Okay. The other thing to remember is you said it was once organized and now it's not. Um, I mean, that happens. Yes, I get it. But it also is because there's too much stuff. So I'm saying like when things are continually going back to being a mess, it's because there's too much stuff in there. So you do need to remove. So then, you know, go for the trash, go for the easy stuff that has an established home somewhere else, get out the duh clutter, get out the easy, you know, like, why is this even there? And then start going one item at a time, asking yourself the question, if I needed this item, where would I look for it first until you've gone through things so that you have gotten it down to what really needs to be in this space. Okay. And that's probably going to be significantly less than it was before. And then you'll have the room to group like items together, which is the first part of the fifth step. Okay. The make it fit step is to consolidate like items together which naturally reveals, oh, I have 16 rolls of tape. Maybe I don't actually need 16 rolls of tape, you know, and then purging it down to the limits of the container. So following the whole process is really key. This is a great time to remind you that y'all, my new book, Organizing for the Rest of Us, comes out on Tuesday. That's a week from today, on Tuesday, January 11th, okay? If you would like the flowchart, 
printable flowchart that's a bonus for this. There's also going to be a live Q&A where we're actually in a Zoom meeting and you get to personally like be there with me in a Zoom meeting, whatever. We all know how that works now. Um, anyway, get your pre-order bonuses by going to a slobcomesclean.com slash pre-order after you've um, pre-ordered any format of the book from anywhere. I don't care where you are. Okay. All right. Um, I hope that was helpful. Okay. How... Okay, here's another question. I know you say to tackle visual spaces first. Okay, I mean visible. Okay, I actually say the visibility rule, like what is visible in your home? Visual, visible spaces first, but at times this overwhelms me. Besides doing the dishes, what spot is your go-to spot to declutter when getting started? I feel like you already answered it. The entryway of my house. Okay. Um, I have podcasts and there's a link down there with links to podcasts um, where like, I think there's one called visibility, visibility, visibility. Like it is all about the visibility rule. And here is why, okay. You are overwhelmed. You're discouraged. I get it. Okay. You don't know where to start. Where's a place to start. Start in the entryway. Now here's the thing about starting in the entryway. There's a couple things there. First of all, there's probably not a lot that needs to actually live in this space. Okay. If something lives in the entryway of your home, and when I say entryway, I mean like what guests coming to your home are going to see first. I know it may not be the space that you see all the time and yet you're going to see it. Okay. And it's the space that if you had to open the front door, it, if it's decluttered, you're going to be like, hi. And if it's not decluttered, you're going to be like, hit the floor, everybody. Okay. So that nobody sees that we're here or go hide in the closet or what, you know what I mean? Like, let's pretend we're not home. So I'm talking about that visible space. Go to that space. Probably not a lot of stuff needs to live there. So it's going to be, I'm not saying it's easy, but you can work through the steps. Okay. Get rid of the trash, get rid, you know, take the easy stuff that has just landed randomly there. Go take it to the place where it was actually supposed to be that you already had established. Get rid of duh clutter. Like, Oh, wait, there are 16 empty boxes from packages that were delivered. And for some reason, I took the stuff out of the packages and then just dumped the boxes right here. That's actually easy. It doesn't mean it's physically easy, but it's easy because it's like, oh, well, I just have to deal with it. Okay. Get rid of that. It's going to look a lot better. Then go through the questions. If I needed this item, where would I look for it first? Take it there now. Or if you, you know, would never occur to you that you already had one, stick it in the donate box. I know I'm going through this really quickly, but this is the decluttering process, okay? That is in extreme great detail and decluttering at the speed of life is in a lot more succinct detail here in organizing for the rest of us. Um, anyway, that's the process, okay? And then, so work through that space. The reason that we start in visible spaces is that this feeling that you have of being overwhelmed, like, where do I even start? What do I even do? it's going to be diminished significantly the more you start in your visible space. And I'm pointing because that's my entryway over there. You can't actually see it. Anyway, um, but the more you start in that space, the more that you have that space, oh, it's not in the back of my mind that if someone knocked on the door, I would hide in the closet. Like, it, you know what I mean? Like it's, oh, I'd be okay if somebody, you know, it takes a while to get used to feeling that way. but that space being better because it's a visible space as opposed to the top shelf of your master bedroom closet, because that space is um, better, you're going to see it. It's going to affect your life positively. You're going to experience the benefit of that space being decluttered on a regular basis. And it's actually going to increase your decluttering energy. So I know that it feels difficult, but I'm just telling you it, it really is the way to benefit from this, you know, decluttering energy that you're putting out there and sustain the decluttering energy and perpetuate and give yourself momentum is by doing that. Okay. Always start in that space. The other thing to remember is that's a visual space, a visible space. People may come in, drop their stuff and it feels like, Oh, it gets, you know, it's a visible space. So it gets cluttered again easily. But the second time you go back to it, which is the second next time you declutter, you're like, okay, I'm going to start in the visible space again. 
it's not going to be what it was that first time. The first time was all these big decisions. The second time is basically trash and easy stuff and you're done. And that's going to take a very short amount of time. And then you move to the next visible space. See what I'm saying? And so what may have taken you an hour, two hours the first time to make these decisions about things that had just been piling there for months or years. Now it, it feels like, oh no, it's cluttered again. It's going to, I'm going to go through that again, but you're not. Okay. Go back to that space experience that, oh, now it's just picking up. Now it's just trash and easy stuff, putting stuff away. Oh, wow. Okay, then you really start to experience the benefit of having worked in that space. Um, let's see, how would you separate person? No, this one's kind of hard. Okay, and this is one of those things where I don't know exactly what you mean or all that. So I'm just going to kind of say what I can say from this situation, from what I have here. How would you separate personal craft items from our in home um, crafting and restoration business items? Space is small, no attic, and very few storage spaces, i.e. shelves. Okay, so um, the space that you have is the space that you have, okay? That doesn't mean it can't ever be changed. It doesn't mean that you can't say, you know what? I mean, like, I, I'm going to tell you, we moved, and the thing I am most excited about, I'm not there yet because I want to have it actually, like, painted and new carpet in there, but I have a little building outside of my house that's going to be my office so I can go away there. So I'm not saying you can't. We can't ever change, except that you do have to deal with the situation that you're in. So I'm going to answer this question, assuming that this is how it is. OK, and, and because that I mean, for what, 13 years of doing this business, I did not have a separate space to go to. Now I do. I couldn't I did not was not able to do that before. OK, so we're going to go with this situation, go with the assumption that this is your situation. This is what you have to deal with. So the size of your house is the size of your house. Um, and the size of the space that you have to devote to your business and craft stuff, which it feels like is maybe mixed together at this point, um, because maybe there's some similar types of things. Um, the space that you have to devote to that is the space that you have to devote to that. OK, so instead of looking at that as, oh, my goodness, I've got to get rid of, get rid of instead say, OK, Good, then I have this limited space. I'm going to use that to my advantage, put the most important things in there first until it's full. And that just naturally separates out the things that aren't quite as important. So I'm saying, so um, I, I know that you, you know, said we want to separate our, our personal stuff from our business stuff. Um, you know, it, it might, if, if you have separate closets or areas that you can do that, great. But let's say it's one closet. Okay, well then this shelf up here is gonna be for personal and the rest of it is gonna be for business because I have to put priority on the business stuff because that's how we support our family or whatever. So that, it, I hope that makes sense, but it all comes down to the container concept and using that, to make the process easier for you, okay? To say, this is the space that we have because we also have to have space in here for us to live and we don't have an attic and we don't whatever, but this is our business, it's our livelihood. And so we're gonna devote, you know, um, let's say you have um, a coat closet or something. Okay, well, we're gonna move our coats into our regular closets and we're gonna make this coat closet the business closet. I know it's hard to know when I don't know exact details, but, um, but yeah, I hope that makes sense. Okay. How did I trans, she's asking me how I translated my decluttering strategy into preparing to move and after moving. So I, I do have videos that I've been recording over time that we will be putting out about the moving process. Um, I will tell you the number one thing that I did to apply the container concept to the move was I shelled out the money, which I'm a cheapskate, so y'all know I don't like doing this, but I made the investment, I think it was a little over $300 to buy a set of boxes that was, according to the U-Haul website, this was the standard normal number of boxes for a three to four bedroom home, okay? And we were moving out of a three bedroom into a four bedroom. And so even though this space, is way bigger. I was like, no, 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 I don't want to fill it up. That's not my goal. Okay. My goal is to have less stuff. So 
I had a certain finite number of boxes. I've talked about this in a couple of podcasts. Um, I had a finite number of boxes that arbitrarily someone had said, this is what, you know, should hold the stuff for a three to four bedroom house. And so I, knowing that there was a limit to the number of boxes, it's not like I couldn't have gone and gotten more. I didn't end up needing to, but just knowing there was a limit made every single thing that was going into the boxes look different to me. I I mean, it's amazing. It's like knowing that the container of the boxes was a limit meant, oh yeah, that's not, I mean, just in case later on I needed that space, this is something that I can already determine is not container worthy. Okay. Um, There's a lot more than that as well. Um, I'm kind of at the point right now where kind of like things and I still have boxes in my garage. And so I'm like, okay, it's now, um, not that it wasn't this way, you know, before, but especially now I'm like, okay, either something has a definite absolute place or I'm just going to donate it. And now it's where it kind of gets difficult. Cause it's like, Oh, but I want it. Oh, but no, it doesn't have a spot. Um, okay. And how much time do I have? Okay. I have a little bit more time. So this is an interesting one earlier in my podcast. This is somebody saying this earlier in your podcast. One of your daily tasks was to wipe down bathroom surfaces. Now it's instead to check bathroom surfaces for clutter. I was wondering if this was a mindset change and why one might work better than the other. Okay. Here's the thing. Some of y'all have listened to the podcasts that I did back in, I think it was 2011 was when I started. And some of y'all have listened to them multiple times. And so you might know more what I said than I did. I actually, I don't, the checking bathrooms for clutter has been my standard thing since I wrote 28 days to hope for your home, which I think was right around that same time. So I don't know. I do know when I first started the blog, but when I was anonymous, couldn't even have imagined that anyone would ever listen to anything I had to say about a house, much less buy a book I wrote. Oh my goodness, whatever. Um, because it was a huge struggle for me as I was trying to figure things out. That is something that I tried was the wiping it down every day. Um, I found a lot of excuses to not do that. You know, like I don't want to have to, cause sometimes I would feel like, well, if I, I have issues y'all. Okay. And I've gotten over a lot of them, but I'm just being honest back then. I mean, I'm sure you can go read and know better than me what it is that I was thinking, but if you go back and read what I wrote back then and on the blog, um, but like in my brain, it was, um, well, I have to take a shower after I do that, (laughs) like timing it according to, oh my goodness, I forgot to do it. And I'm already dressed for the day and I don't want, okay. So checking the bathrooms for clutter is literally um, the least I could think of to do in there. Okay. And there's power in it. Okay. Like I like to know what is the absolute basics that will have a huge impact that, that really does. If I don't do it, it stops everything else from happening. That's like me. I mean, like I need to know, tell me for real, because when somebody starts to tell me that you need to do this and you need to do this. And I'm like, "Mm, I can live just fine without doing those things. Then I'm like, okay, well, I'm probably, so I try to get out of that kind of stuff. So instead I'm like, I have to identify what is the absolute basics. Well, if I check the bathrooms for clutter, then at a glance, the bathroom looks pretty much fine. Okay. Now, if somebody is wiping down surfaces, obviously they're going to be dealing with the clutter, but I needed to just get it down to the absolute. So if I will deal with the clutter, then I've picked up the stuff off the floor. I have dealt with the random things that end up on the bathroom counter, all that. And at a glance, the bathroom looks okay. And when I have that moment of (gasps) somebody is coming over and I need to be able to let them in the bathroom, then all I have to do is wipe down the bathroom. Okay. Because I don't first have to, you know, dig out all the stuff on the floor, you know, get all the stuff in the hamper. And oh my goodness, there's like, you know, 15 empty moose bottles or whatever on the counter. And I have to shake them all, figure out, you know, like that kind of thing. I don't have to go there because everything is, you know, decluttered. And so then when I do an actual like real bathroom cleaning, I don't have to first declutter. All of that makes it all go so much faster, which makes me a whole lot more willing to do it. Okay. All right. So those were the questions I was going to ask. 
Pamela, you didn't miss it. You're here right now. And I'm actually live right this second, Pamela. Anyway, <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, okay. Um, Y'all are being great and helpful to each other. I don't, do we not have any wackadoodles? Good. Maybe they're at work. Um, okay. Let's see. Let's see. It's, <laughs> it's midnight in the Netherlands. That's awesome. Um, okay. We, I actually have to go here in a, just a few minutes, but I'm just going to see really quickly. Um, Sarah says we moved to a new house. That's huge. So now we have a container that fits everything, but I can't manage it. How do I manage? How do I find my clutter threshold with such a big container? Okay. Just, you know, your container's fine. So quit worrying about that. Okay. And focus on the clutter threshold. This space continually, continually gets out of control. It needs to have less in it. It just needs to have less. Eliminate, eliminate, eliminate until, oh, that's staying under control. Okay, so focus more on the clutter threshold. Um, let's see. Yay. Okay, I'm trying to put things away. I noticed I put things down and they become invisible. Um, okay, totally understand that, Stacey. So this is where the five-minute pickup is in incredibly important for someone like me. I'm like you, I call it slob vision. Please don't be offended. I'm not calling it that for you. I'm only calling it that for me, but that that's it. Like if I don't see just random things and things just leave my hands. So I have to do a five minute pickup, which is a focus time at any random time when I start to go, Oh my goodness. My house. Okay. Five minute pickup. Okay. And then that clears that vision for me and it helps me go, Oh, I need to pick stuff up and put it away. And then I see those things. And so it's a focused five minute pickup. And it's amazing. Even if your house is crazy and you're like, five minutes won't make a difference, do five minutes anyway. And it will make a little bit of a difference. And then do another five minutes tomorrow. And over time, you're going to really see impact. Okay. Um, oh, I love it. Um, Mix it up. Marcy says she loves working on her home, listening to decluttering at the speed of life over and over again. Um, yeah. So this one's an audiobook too. Remember, go get your, um, go get your doolally, your printable decluttering flowchart, which I'm super proud of. Um, anyway, when you pre-order, when you fill out your pre-order information at a slob comes clean.com slash pre-order. Um, so this one is an audiobook as well. It is me reading it. Just so you know, though, a lot of the very first strategies are a recap of things that were in my other book. Cause the, the value of this book is it's flip throughable. Everything is bite-sized. It's just like that, 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 where the other books are lots and lots of words. Anyway. Um, so it, you know, yeah, just know that, especially because I always feel like with Audible, you, with this one, you flip through it and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, it's got the five decluttering steps here, blah, blah, blah. But then over here is stuff that wasn't in our other books. Um, and this one, you're just listening and you can't flip through. But anyway, okay, I am um, going to see. Let's see. Oh, I love it. Deborah is using her flowchart printout to declutter right now. Y'all, I'm so proud of that thing. I, I, I'm serious. Like I love that flowchart. It's one of my favorite things I've ever done. <laughs> okay. Um, Elizabeth says, I knew I'd been successfully decluttering and organizing when my five-year-old daughter said getting too many Christmas gifts made her room feel too, too full. Oh, I love it. LOL, LOL time to declutter. I love it. Um, let's see see. Okay. I think I, oh, I do. I have to go. I have to pick up my daughter. So thank you so much for watching. Um, those of y'all who enjoy being here on a live, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but it's really, really fun. And I'm enjoying doing these. So we will, um, work on this. I mean, we'll, we'll do more of these over time, especially here in January when it is decluttering time and people are ready to get stuff out of their house. So make sure you go get your copy. The links are in the um, video description. All right. I'll talk to you later.